What's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch from MW Technology, and today we're going to be talking about FSD version 12 for Teslas. Now, if you don't own Teslas, you've never experienced them, this video is still going to be interesting in the sense we're going to talk about full self-driving capabilities, what that exactly means, and what this new version 12 has to offer, whether we'll actually have self-driving cars to be a reality in the near future, or whether this is just kind of a gimmick, again, like all the FSD previous uh, from the version 12. So we're going to go through the pros, the cons, and whether that robo taxi is going to be a reality. Now, firstly, let's talk about what full self-driving actually means. Basically, you can get in the car, set in your navigation point, and from A to B, road to road, all the decision making will be done by the autonomous system. It's classically known as level four to level five autonomy. Level four is what we see in uh, some of the cities up in the States where you have a Waymo operating in San Francisco and Arizona, where there is uh, typically no driver, but there are manual controls, but uh, the system is fully autonomous, but it is geofenced to a specific area and to a specific municipality. And that municipality has a lack these robo taxis or self-driving cars to be available level five is where you have no steering wheels no pedals that is pretty much the ultimate goal for tesla one of their main since the company started and uh, so much so is that the next car will either be a twenty-five thousand dollar compact car or a robo taxi and most likely they might be the same thing that is to say a car with no steering wheels and no pedals that brings us to the question is is the system reliable enough to make that even a reality? Well, I've been using FSD uh, version 12 again every day for the past 30 days. And this is a vision-based end-to-end neural net. It's 100% reliant on the eight cameras that are on most Tesla vehicles. So that means it's vulnerable to visual obstructions that could interfere with that camera's vision processing system. So that means in certain weather conditions, rainy, uh, fog, snow, ice, the cameras uh, definitely could be obstructed and there's no self-cleaning system besides the front-facing cameras that use the windshield wipers uh, to clean them off. Now, uh, those are definitely some valid concerns for a vision-based system only, but based on my experience, surprisingly driving in rainy conditions, semi-foggy, and definitely a lot of nighttime conditions, the system does pretty much the same overall reliability and driving dynamics and performance as in clear days. So the system is quite reliant, but I wouldn't say that it's foolproof. You can definitely get the cameras dirty and the system will also let you know when the cameras are being obscured, whether it be sunlight or any kind of other obstructions in the cameras. So the autopilot slash FSD system might be degraded. Now, as we mentioned before, the ultimate goal for Tesla is full autonomy. That is bringing a vehicle that can drive your kids to school and back, a car that you can get in without any license, just get in and go anywhere. Is that going to be a possibility? And the short answer to that question is if you're going to base everything on this system that we have with V12, I would say definitely not. But the real question is how far are we from having AI be smarter and safer than real drivers? And how far are we from that total recall Johnny Cab scenario where you can just get in and rely on a computer with your life? Well, I would say we're pretty far, but not that far off. Based on my experience with V12, most of my drives have been fairly uneventful. And it's definitely a massive improvement from version 11 that I had the opportunity to test out last year, which was super unreliable. In terms of reliability scale, based on my experience, I would say 90% of the time you can rely on version 12. That means if I go on a drive at any given moment, there's going to be a 10% chance that I'm going to have to intervene and manually disengage for whatever scenario. With V11, it was pretty much 40% uh, reliable. That means if I go on a drive, 60% chance likely that I'm going to have to disengage because it did some kind of stupid error. And that's definitely a massive improvement and definitely a big step in the right direction, making uh, the FSD system based on human driving interactions using the video based system definitely makes it drive more natural and is a lot more fluid and blends into traffic a lot better than V11 for sure. What also really impressed me 
is the ability to improvise in novel situations. For example, going through construction zones where we have different detours, it'll follow the cones for the detours. It will even recognize flaggers with stop and go signs and follow their directions accordingly. Furthermore, it'll also give the right of way to pedestrians crossing the road on a crosswalk. It will also give right of way to cars on four-way stop signs. It can also be quite courteous at times, say if you're driving down the road and you're stopped and waiting on a light and there's a adjacent street or road in front of you where a car is coming in and wants to merge onto your lane, it will actually give opportunities for that car to come in front of you and get into your lane. So it can be quite courteous. Now, a new feature that has been added is auto speed offset. This is basically gonna make the car drive much more like a human and blend into traffic a lot better. With the normal FSD, it'll basically follow the posted speed limit to a T. And that's fine. It's legal, obviously, you wanna go the speed limit, but most drivers go a little bit over and I find that you are gonna lag behind traffic. And I always find that when you're going the speed limit exactly, there's always gonna be cars that are gonna overtake you and that can become a safety hazard. So in order to address that issue, Tesla has added auto speed offset, which can be governed in three different modes, whether your FSD is set to chill, standard, or assertive. So it will generally, uh, for example, set in assertive, it will accelerate faster, brake more abruptly, and it's definitely a little bit more aggressive in terms of its driving style and acceleration. acceleration <laughs> but it definitely keeps up with traffic a lot more you blend in completely with all the speeding human drivers the potential risk of the auto speed offset setting especially in assertive mode is that you potentially can get in some legally gray areas when it comes to speeding uh, for example uh, me and my brother were traveling back the other night uh, using FSD with auto speed offset turned on in assertive mode. We're getting off the off ramp of the highway and the exit speed on the ramp uh, was actually uh, 75, 80 kilometers an hour, which in technical terms, this post the speed limit off the ramp should be around 50 kilometers an hour. So definitely speeding. And uh, there was a cop right on the side of the road, but uh, we luckily disengaged and avoided a ticket. So it definitely can be a little bit risky because if you're gonna drive like uh, most human drivers, well, human drivers make mistake, they speed. And this is another one of the big challenges that you're gonna have to face with when trying to replicate a proper full self-driving car that's gonna deal with real humans on the road. Now, some of the other issues that I've had is that the system doesn't sometimes recognize left turn signals. So when you're on a left turn lane and there's an arrow to turn left in some roads, the camera does not recognize that and it doesn't go. So I've had a couple of times where people got annoyed. They honked at me for not going on the left turn arrow. So that's definitely an error that has to be addressed. <coughs> Lower speed maneuverability can be a little bit herky-jerky, so when you're uh, traveling uh, left or right, uh, turn maneuvers can be a little bit uh, jarring at times, and uh, navigating through slower speeds and parking lots are also a little bit challenging, especially when it comes to parking lots. This system is quite slow to react and definitely doesn't have enough kind of data or power to uh, improvise in different unique situations in parking lots. And uh, when it comes to the auto park feature that this car has now, uh, you can basically park in marked or unmarked parking spots, which is really cool. And uh, the selection process, you'll see the parking spots available for you to park in. You just select which spot you want to go in and it'll eventually get you in. Uh, it is slow. It takes about three to two times the speed if you were to park just at a regular speed. So it's definitely not efficient. And if this car is waiting for you to park, you definitely get to annoy them, which is generally the thing that you're going to find with FSD. You're probably going to annoy most regular drivers that don't know what you're doing, but they think you're in a Tesla, you're probably a weirdo anyways.
Now, probably the worst situation that I've encountered with the FSD so far is that it will potentially damage your tires and wheels if it goes too close to a curb or comes out of a specific parking spot. For example, uh, just the other day, I was parked uh, right beside a curb in a parking spot and I navigated through the FSD. It accelerated quite aggressively and then it turned quite sharply to the right and uh, my right rear tire came in contact with the curb went over it and luckily it was a gently sloped curb it wasn't a sharp high curb which would have definitely damaged the wheels but luckily that didn't happen uh, but in other situations it could definitely damage your vehicle so you definitely want to be careful of that and scenarios like this that really make me quite nervous and you definitely lose confidence in the system uh, when using it on a day-to-day -day basis but really other than that guys that's really it in summary, I would definitely have to say that FSD V12 is a huge, gigantic upgrade from uh, V11, which is definitely a novelty, uh, but it is definitely far from prime time. There needs to be some serious work uh, that uh, is being done right now, obviously by kind of beta testers like uh, us and everyone else who's interested. And uh, eventually, I think by the time that RoboTaxi comes out, which will be in three to four years potentially uh, we could have this system uh, ready and uh, be capable of driving somebody a to b without any interference be 100 percent reliable but um, the question is is there enough resources being poured in to the ai problem and to uh, full self-driving to make that reality uh, i think based on how far the evolution has come to basically creating these cars from what we started with to what we have now and the amount of uh, capital billions if not trillions of dollars uh, being spent on ai that uh, reality could definitely be very very close uh, definitely years away uh, not decades away so i want to thank you guys so much for watching i'm in the garage now and uh, if you have any specific questions let me know if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. If you like content like this, we'll definitely have to bring you more. But in the meantime, we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.